I have a million questions for you. Okay. Uh, I like throwing things off um, at, at the beginning with, you know, I have, I have a lot of questions anyway. Let's just get started. Um, okay. You stopped by our Sundance studio in 2020 for Farewell. Uh, mm -hmm. Amor, and um, and at the time, the, I think you had shot the Batman and it had, or maybe you hadn't shot, I don't know. But what has the last few years been like for you because at that moment you had done a tiny little bit and now yeah. you've worked with all these different people. What, what has this last few years been like? It's been crazy, dude. I can't, I, I, and it's gone by so fast, you know, like as much information as I feel like I'm having to um, uh, uh, soak up uh, with all these different uh, uh, platforms and people and artists that I'm getting to work with. But it's been, it's been, it's been great. I can't, I, it's unreal. Unreal. Yeah, I can't imagine what it's like for you. Um, but you've worked with such great actors and all these talented directors. And I'm curious, what have you learned in the last few years that he didn't teach you in like acting school? You know what's interesting, actually? I don't know that it's about that I necessarily learned anything different, but trying to translate what I learned into these other mediums. That's more so what the learning curve has been. Um, uh, like, cause all the work is the same. Like the work that I, I grew up training um, for theater, it's the same kind of work. It's just trying to translate it um, into a different kind of schedule or, or, or way or process. Um, and I was so lucky to start with Farewell and More to have that, you know, as like my, my kind of like transition period to, you know, a small indie project to, to, to figure a lot of things out and ask a bunch of questions and not feel a whole lot of pressure. Um, so it's been good just to test everything out, test everything out with different directors and different roles and different actors and have the privilege of like watching masters up close at work. <laughs> it's sure. like, yeah, yeah, it's great. No, I mean, there, there's a lot of people, um, it's, uh, uh, it's like having it like you, you're essentially apprentice, like you're taking an apprenticeship uh -huh. when you're watching like Viola Davis work next yeah. to you. You're like, oh, this is how she does it. This is how I need to do it. It's like it's like the special days of it's like I get to have a master class every day I show up to set. That's how it feels to me. I'm like, OK, I get to watch these masters at work and I'm stealing this and I'm soaking this up and I'm, I'm remembering this moment and how you do this. Right. Like just got to be a thief on set. <laughs> Completely. Um, so I love learning about how actors like to prepare. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've only been doing, you've only been working in the industry, if you will, for a little while. But have you yeah. noticed that the way you prepare for each role is similar? Or have you adjusted it slightly based on your experiences? Um, it's definitely similar. I mean, it, it, it depends on the role, right? Like any, I've had the, I have the privilege of getting to work on um, historical women. Uh, and so that takes a ton of research for me. Like uh, that's probably where I start immediately is just in digging in. I want to know every kind of backstory detail I could possibly know about your childhood, uh, 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 uh and, and building that, in, that arc. Um, I like listening to different interviews, um, figuring out like the kind of music that they listen to, you know, um, but I, I have a similar approach, even the fictional characters, just trying to create, you know, that kind of backstory and create a full, full character, even down to the tiny little details. Um, if I can, if I have enough time to do that, I, <laughs> I try to luxuriate in that. It's so funny. There's so many people that don't really realize the way the business works in terms of I've spoken to actors that, that tell me they got the role two days before filming yep. again. And it's yep. just like you're just doing the best you can. You just trying to wing it. <laughs> you yeah. just trying to do the best you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, so jumping into Till, um, it is, uh, I saw it last night. Uh, oh, very, okay. Yeah, very powerful film. Um, I'm so happy it was made. And I, I wanted to sort of touch on that. The fact that like, it's hard to believe that this film and the story takes place less than 70 years ago. It's mm -hmm. still so recent and it, it, it's just so infuriating to me. Um, can you sort of talk about that aspect? This, this is our recent history and it's shameful. Yeah, I, I um, like you said, it's very recent. 
And somehow, I think the shocking thing for me, especially during everything that was happening with George Floyd, um, it kind of resurrected in a way as if most, as if it had been forgotten or wasn't even known to a lot of people, um, which was different for me because I grew up with knowing the horror of what happened with Emmett Till and and like you said, it is, it is, it is still very much, it's history, but it's still very much a part of what's happening in the present day. I mean, the fact that that uh, the lynching bill is just get, got passed, uh, it, it, we can't chalk this up to something that happened uh, a while ago when uh, change is just starting to happen as a result of it now in 2022. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm so, thankful that Chinoye took this on to, to tell this story and to honor Mamie in particular, because often when we talk about Emmett, um, we talk about the horror that was done to him, but we don't, um, we don't talk about his mother and the kind of bravery and courage that it took in the midst of her grief uh, to share her son with the world. Um, so I, I'm really excited for this film. I'm really excited for it. Oh, and also, um, you know, and I want to make sure Danielle, right? She, uh, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. So Danielle, her performance is riveting. Um, and it's so, yeah. you, you know, um, and what is it like? Cause you have a, you have one key scene with her in, 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 and I don't know if you shot more than that, if anything was deleted, but there's one key scene in the movie. And I'm just curious what it was like sharing the screen with her watching her deliver such a great performance, you know, in all these scenes. It's a gift. Oh my God. As an actress, you, you hope to have a moment like that. That scene is the only, no, nothing was cut. What's in that, um, in the film is what was on the page. Um, and um, getting to, I mean, Danielle is a, who she's a force. And getting that opportunity to just show up because I was only there for like two days of filming and, to, and they would already been in the process, you know? So I, I'm trying to figure out how to step in and fit in into the world that's already been created. Um, but even before then, her and I got on the Zoom, we had like meetings just talking about the scene and breaking it down. And what does this mean for these two women to come together and talking with Chinonye and, oh, I, I, I cherish that moment because you live for moments like that. Um, and to be opposite an actress that, that that giving, that generous, um, and and willing to really build something in that moment. Um, yeah, she's 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 absolutely phenomenal in this role. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, <laughs> yeah. the thing, I mean, she's fantastic. Um, yeah. But the thing that I didn't realize was how involved Medgar Edgars was in Emmett's story. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know this stuff. Um, and I knew. Yeah. Med, I know Medgar Edgars. Anyway, but can you sort of talk about? the responsibility of playing a, a real person, Medgar Edgar's wife, and the fact that you mentioned, like you have very limited time on screen to mm -hmm. make the audience understand what also she's going through right. and the sacrifices that she's making. Right, well, when we talked about, um, when I talked with Chinoye about Merle Evers, um, and particularly at this pivotal moment, um, I, what happened with Emmett was a turning point um, for a lot of people in the country, right? Because it was the first time really that something we, uh, anybody saw the, that kind of brutality publicized, you know? Um, it was always, it was maybe talked about in hush, but nobody had ever really seen it. Um, and for Merle, um, she was young, she was 22. She was 22 when Emmett was murdered and she had just had a son. And so for me in approaching Merle, I felt like this was a key moment of, of a decision having to be made, uh, of really understanding the kind of sacrifice that she was going to have to make if she was to continue to support Medgar in his efforts and, and realizing that she was having to give Medgar up to the cause. Um, and there was a different weight to it now because she's a mother. She's a young mother. And, and what she's going to have to sacrifice in order to continue to show up. Um, and she was younger than I am in making these decisions. Like, uh, that's what blew me away. 
because often we talk about these um, heroes of history and they feel so distant because they feel like they were older when they were when they were showing up for these causes and like no they were tw in their 20s their early 20s um, to make that kind of sacrifice and she definitely learned something from Mamie um, and how Mamie showed up it gave backbone I think yeah I, I can't imagine being 22 and making you know it's not at all. It, not it, at all. Yeah, it's just, but um, the thing that's crazy is you shared the screen with Danielle and you shared the screen with Viola. And these are two of the best performances I've seen. You know, these are these are fantastic performances this year. Yeah. Do, do you sort of feel like you should be playing the lottery? You know, like in terms of like, <laughs> you know, like how lucky you are to, to be working with these and in and, and watching these, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I you know, it is part luck, but it's also, um, I feel like you give out a certain energy, it's bound to be reciprocated. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like I, I just, I give out such intentionality and uh, respect and honor for the craft and the kind of roles that I, I care about. And so I feel really blessed that it's being reciprocated, especially so early on. Like, cause I know that, that that's rare but I'm going to ride that for as long as I can. <laughs> no, completely. I have, listen, yeah. I, have, I have a lot of actor friends and um, it's really, really hard. Yeah. It, it's just really hard. So I, I say, but listen, you, uh, I say congrats, but were you with, with Woman King, um, mm -hmm. you, you're one of the people that didn't have to do some of the crazy fight stuff <laughs> and stunts. Yeah. And were you sort of like, when you saw, were you happy that you didn't have to do those stunt scenes and those big action set pieces, or were there days where you're like, man, I, I'd like to be doing that training and doing that stuff. I'll say this. I, um, when the first, when I first showed up, um, they were filming, um, the, 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 uh, warrior dance, um, uh, sequence right before they go out to battle. And I'm sitting there and I'm like chills, like chills up my arm and like tears welling up in my eyes and I see Gina and I'm just like can the queen just like come out there and do a little because <laughs> it was so powerful like you hear them do the agoji wuzu the warrior cry and I was like oh can there be a moment where I can just you know just a little something um it was definitely inspiring to see uh uh I did not envy them on the days where we were in the brutal sun and 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 I'm under a nice little canopy. Uh, I didn't envy that, but uh, it definitely made me hungry for for something like that, that kind of rigor and training and, you know, because I'm a physical actor anyway. Um, but I, I commend them for that because that that took a lot out of them. Yeah, I, I spoke to John and uh... I asked him what it was like, you know, not having to do the physical stuff. Yeah. And he, he shared a story about going to Viola's house and he asked where the juice is and everyone was like, no, it's water. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it, was, it was just a whole thing. Uh, yeah. It was just funny to, you know, to hear about that. But talk, if you don't mind, talk a little bit about getting to be part of that project as well, because obviously it's like an A plus with cinema score. People love it. It turned out so great. Um, can yeah. you sort of talk about what it means to you? Um, I knew I had to be a part of that project and I didn't care what, it, I didn't care what it was. I remember telling Gina that I was like, I just got to be a part of this because it's history. And I know people might not have known how it was going to do, but everybody that was a part of the project had complete faith in it, um, and knew that it was important. Uh, and we've never seen it before. Like we've never seen a global box office movie led by nothing but black women like that has never existed and the fact that that's never existed is also like mind-boggling um and like it's a it's just a it's an amazing film like what are we talking about like it's just like a really great film full of talented actors um i that uh yeah i i'm really happy and like proud that i got to be a part of that and any more chance I get to tell Viola and Gina, I'm like, y'all did this. Y'all did it. Like, like you, thank you. You made this space. You made it happen. Thank you. Yeah. 
uh, also, um, people don't realize getting an A plus cinema score is not easy. It is mm-hmm. a very, very, like A is, it happens. A plus is like very rare. And I also yeah. like it when my cat decides to interrupt our interviews <laughs> and just, you know, just, uh, just join because it gives That's no a little chance. bit of screen time. That's all. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, I definitely want to ask you though, um, because obviously one of my favorite films of the year is the Batman. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, Matt Reeves just did such an amazing job. Um, can you sort of talk a little bit about getting to be a part of that project? And was it weird not being able to like tell anyone anything about the movie for so long? Um, I had fun with that actually. I had fun being secretive. I I don't know. There's something I'm like that anyway. Um, like I'm really good at planning surprises for people. So I like not being able to, like when people ask me, like, oh, you know, you just gotta wait to see it. I don't, I can't no. And people like can't like I had family constantly trying to ask me questions in different ways. I'm like, guys, I'm not saying anything. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I that I had so much fun working on that. That was like right after Farewell to More. So talk about jumping in the deep end, you know. Um, but everybody a part of that project too was just like ama- like Matt, <sighs> dream director. Um, and Dylan, the, um, one of the producers just, they were all amazing and so warm and welcoming to me. They didn't make me feel, uh, out of place as a, as a kind of newcomer. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love them. What was, can you watch yourself on screen? What was it like actually watching Batman for the first time? Because you, you are obviously in a section of the movie, so you don't really, I'm not sure how much you knew about what was going to happen. And also with with uh, Jay Kino's music. And this, I mean, it's it's just such a, anyway, I'm just curious what it was like for you and if you can watch yourself on screen. Uh, I could definitely watch myself in that because it ain't about me. So like, I could just enjoy it as a fan. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have to, I didn't have to be, you see me pop in and out, but I didn't have to be concerned about that. I could really enjoy the film. Um, I'm getting better about learning how to watch myself. I remember the first time I saw myself, which was with Farewell and More, and I like cringed because I'm not used to that. I'm, I was never like, I don't think we're meant to see ourselves. <laughs> I just don't feel like that. Um, but also my brain, I think, is, is, is calculating and working in, in other capacities outside of acting. So I'm trying to get myself, you know, uh, to, to be able to, 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 to enjoy and watch a film uh, without cringing at myself coming up on the screen. I'm not succeeding all the way, but I'm, I'm definitely getting better. Definitely getting better. I was gonna say to you, there's a ton of actors I know who, uh, when they're at the world premiere of a movie, uh, they wave at everyone, they say hi, and they walk right up, and yeah. they will not watch it because they yeah. it just they can't do it. I think that'll be different. It may be different if I'm like leading a film. I feel like then there might be something where it's like, ooh, I don't know that I want to sit through this. Um, but I get the pleasure of actually enjoying the films that I'm I'm I, I'm I'm a part of right now. You know what I mean? No, so no, completely. Yeah. Did it end up? Did, did the film end up turning out better than you expected, um, or was it? with the Batman or did you know going in like this is going to be amazing I knew going in because I when I read the script he didn't change anything from the script literally what's on the what Kate was on the screen was what we read um so when I first read that script I was like oh no this is about to be epic right like uh, like epic um and then to see it fully with all the elements again as a fan I just was living I was living for it Last, last question on this. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that people don't realize is when you're in a huge film like the Batman that gets, you know, makes all this money and everyone watches it, it's like getting in front of every casting agent um, all at once because everyone's watching the movie. And so yeah. everyone is, you know, they're, they're seeing you for pro- probably the first time. Did yeah. you find after the movie came out, obviously you booked a number of things, but did you find afterwards that all of a sudden you were taking more meetings, meeting more people? Do you know what I mean? This is interesting. You know why? Because because of the pandemic, when that when Batman came out, by the time Batman came out, um, it was more so the fact that people knew that I had gotten cast in it that piqued a lot of 
lot of casting directors interest because it's like who is this girl that just got out of college and she's in the batman what so the word of mouth definitely got me a whole lot of meetings and then once that came out and then first lady came out uh it was like okay we're seeing and now i've had like a lot of projects that i've been a part of come out this year it's like oh who is she wait a second you know um but the, the word of mouth definitely got me <laughs> very far before anybody saw any of it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I was, I was going to make a joke that you should send Matt a thank you card for the casting. You know, like a- like Oh, a I tell him all the time. I'm like, I'm one of the, I tell people when I'm so grateful. Like, I was like, Matt, yeah, y'all didn't have to do this. Y'all really didn't have to cast me. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm messing around. But so I just read that you got cast in Genius MLK X. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, so when, I mean, that's another, talk about like history, history, history. Oh. Uh, so is this like going to be the MO from now on? Is it, I'm just taking historical parts or is it just? The <laughs> no, no. Um, but I, I'm just so honored that I can do this. I think because it speaks again to, for me, it's always been about, it's, it's always about, um, showing a kind of agency or uh, with black women um especially in this industry that that seems to be a new phenomena but it's always existed so the fact that i'm getting to tell these stories of of women from our history and bring them to the forefront um i'll take those on any day but no that's not gonna i'm not gonna just be doing right. <laughs> historical pieces <laughs> Listen, I, I'm just messing around. I think the fact that you're being asked to play these important women is honestly, it's a privilege. And it's, yeah. it's amazing. And the, you know, yeah. the, it's, please, I, I mean, it's, um, but so when do you actually, have you started filming? When, when are you filming it? No, we uh, actually leave for Atlanta in like a week. So um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in research mode right now. I'm deep, deep, deep in, uh, in prep in my, in my hubble with all my books um, uh, which is like my happy place right now so i'm excited i'm really excited uh and you also mentioned obviously you got to play michelle obama um is, yeah. is it one of those things where you secretly hope she's gonna see it no no that's too much pressure for me i don't i wouldn't no <laughs> I, if, if no if ever i get to meet her i just i really don't want her to say anything about seeing me portray her i really don't that's that no. <laughs> That's uh, so you've obviously played or are about to play a, you, a lot of historical important women. Is are all of them for you the same pressure that you put on yourself because each person is so important? Or did you find or have you found that one really got where you're like a lot putting more pressure on yourself for one of these? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think they all present their own kind of pressure, right? Like with playing um, a younger version of Michelle Obama, um, that's my hero. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I just, uh, that's part of why I didn't want to talk to her. Cause I was like, if I talk to you, I don't know that I can fully show up as you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that I can can really do that. Um, I got to talk to Merle Evers though, um, in prepping for, for um, Till, and that was a, a huge benefit, um, right? I think also because it's just, it was just a, a, a primarily one little scene in the movie. So there wasn't like a whole pressure of having to like tell her entire life story. Um, and then with prepping for Betty, again, it's a, it's just a different, it's different kinds of pressure. Um, but I just feel the need to tell the truth and honor them as, as best as I possibly can and honor them in their complexity as best as I can. No, yeah. Completely. On that note, I'm just going to say, I really appreciate your time. I wish you yeah. nothing but the best.